When you build up a relationship with someone and you know, you know their character. When we met for a breakfast, you were so thorough with everything. I just knew you were going to be successful. to give a quick shout out to my podcast manager, Abby. If you're in need of help in launching and managing your own show, please reach out to her at productions at abbyguaki.com. I'll put her details in the show notes. She really is the best and I love her. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm super excited that you're joining me today because I have brought on an amazing guest. And I have brought on actually my partner. So we're continuing the series of how to buy a business and why we want to buy a business and what we're doing. And, you know, I've, I've done a couple solo episodes for you. And today I really wanted to bring my partner in with me so you can meet her. And then also, so we can tell you about how we were able to form our partnership, what partnership means to us, and then also what our plans are for the business. So stick around to the end because we're excited about the business plans and how they're going. But first, I want to introduce my partner and good friend, Amber Boskers. Amber, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Camilla. I'm very excited to be here and I'm looking forward to our conversations. So we can add value to your followers. Yeah, I'm so excited that you're here and super honored to partner with you in this business that we just purchased together. So let's rewind a little bit. Let's tell the audience how we met. Amber, how did we meet? Well, I was tra tracing this back and it all began with an invitation to join an accountability group. For me, the inv invitation came, I believe it was December 2020. And I joined the accountability group January 2021. Mm -hmm. And Camilla was there. It was just an amazing type of progress where I was invited to come into this network of aspiring women who were leveling up week after week. And I joined in. And over the course of two and a half years, I just developed this relationship with you, understand where you're at. I see you every week. I know what you're doing and our relationship grew and I just couldn't wait to become a partner with you one day. Yeah. This accountability group has been life-changing for me and I know for you as well. I mean, obviously here we are <laughs> buying a business together. Like who would have thought that would have happened out of this accountability group? But you know what's interesting about these groups? And it was a group of all women that were aspiring and, and it was run by our good friend, Alex Bershears, and she would help us every week. And basically every week we would show up and we would set a goal. I think we would set quarterly goals. And so we had a quarterly goal and then we'd break that down into every week, how we're going to be able to achieve that. And then every week we came back and we basically reported, we just did a round robin and we reported back on our status on how we were doing. We didn't just set business goals. There were a lot of really amazing business goals that were accomplished during that accountability group, but there were also personal goals and spiritual goals and health goals that were set. We were holding each other accountable to these goals. Now, also, we weren't super strict and angry. I think sometimes we, if, it, it might be scary to join an accountability group because you might think, well, what if I screw up one week? What happened if you screwed up one week, Amber? Well, you had to own it. And you had to tell a group of people who are looking at you that you didn't accomplish your goal. Sometimes that was an opening for a discussion on a struggle that other members of the group actually had been experiencing themselves or had experienced, but it created a conversation. But the most important thing though, is your own ownership. You are supposed to do what you say you're going to do. And it's tough when you have to admit that you failed. You failed the people who are looking to you to succeed. So do that very often. And I, but it was interesting because those that didn't continually show up, some of them weren't doing the work. So it was easier for them just to avoid it than to own it. But it's so important for you to own it. Where we struggle, yeah. we are also successful. We also have wins. And it's those wins that we get to celebrate. And then the struggles, we get to pull each other up and encourage each other to keep going for the next week. Yeah. More than one time, it came out of my mouth when it was my turn that, 
I'm so glad for this accountability group because I probably would not have done this had I not had to come back and report (laughs) because sometimes it's easy to break promises to yourself. You say, okay, I'm going to do this, right? So say you want to set a goal to exercise three times a week and you set that goal for yourself, but it's pretty easy to break that goal, right? Because if you don't have anyone you're accountable to. So sometimes you need that external accountability, including the internal, and and then you combine that with your internal accountability, and then you start to grow. One of the other cool things about this group was that it was a group that was there to celebrate big achievements. I think sometimes, especially as women, We often think that if we celebrate something big, so for example, becoming a millionaire, I had a really hard time even saying those words out loud, but in this group, with this group of women, things like that were absolutely celebrated. Like you could say numbers, you could throw numbers out and the women in there were cheering for you. And it wasn't a competition. I never felt like, oh, she's doing better than I am. So therefore I'm not enough. It was definitely more of an environment of joy and celebration and being excited for each other. Like there's a woman in our group, her name's Julie. And One day she came back and she's like, oh, I put 10 houses under contract. I was like, 10? You're buying 10 at a time? And she just went on and she just kept doing things like that over and over and over. And it was amazing and so fun to celebrate her achievements as she continued to grow her investment portfolio. The key with that too, is you start absorbing this energy. You want to be part of this. You want to be part of the excitement every week to share in these accomplishments Because that feeling of, wow, well, listen to what she's doing. That's an inspiration and it's a motivation. And I love Julie. She's so incredible. I met her at a a conference in person and I felt like I've known her for years because she's been that face, just like you, Mm -hmm. Camilla, every single week, week after week. And so I love the fact that you can grow these relationships. You can communicate in ways that maybe your sphere may not understand or your family members, they don't really understand it this component of you or the vision and goals that you have and you're aspiring for. So finding the right people to be able to grow and experience this, it's so paramount. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I want to talk about the other side of it too. So we're humans and as women, we have a lot on our plate. We have to manage a lot of challenges and life happens, right? Life happens and it comes at you. And I always felt safe in that group to be able to tell everyone that my father-in-law passed away, right? To be able to tell everyone that I had a really big loss in my business and everyone held space for that and was, was very kind and gracious and supportive. And then, you know, the interesting thing that happened from that group is we, we would meet every week, but then there would be like offshoots from that, right? I've had many, many individual one-on-one conversations with women in that group who reached out to me because maybe they needed help raising money for their next investment, or maybe they just wanted to talk about being a mama, right? Of, of teenagers and all of that. And, and I reached out to them because maybe I needed help with the acquisition process because I really struggle with acquisitions, you know? And so there's a lot of things that can happen in a group like that. And you just have to join and let it go. So Amber, what are some strategies if our listener really wants to find something like that? How do they find that? Well, how I found this group was actually taking action after listening to a podcast. There was a podcast that I listened to and there was a guest and he was in the multifamily space based out of Sarasota. I went on to his site and then he had a guest and it was Mandy McAllister. And I just connected with this woman's energy. And so she had put the call out to, hey, anyone interested in contacting me, feel free to do so. Okay. (laughs) So I did that. And from there, these small steps of action developed into a relationship and that invite that ended up into being a uh, invitation. And then, you know, I just kind of absorbed these meetings for a little bit. You just kind of like wanted to see how everything's going and listen to all these incredible stories. And I knew I was in the right place. Sometimes though, yeah. you're, it's, you're not going to be in the right place. So the most important thing is to take action and just put yourself out there, you know, request a call, request a zoom, 
ask if you could join, you know, just to see, to experience the energy and the different personalities and even just the topic and you will find your place. Yeah. And don't be afraid to start your own, right? Too. If you can't find what you're looking for, chances are there are hundreds of other women who also cannot find what they're looking for and they want the same thing that you do. And I think that's what Mandy did. I think Mandy wanted a a strong group of women that were aspiring. And so she created the Facebook group called Aspiring Women Achieving More, AWAM for short. And and just kind of started inviting people that she would meet at conferences and into this group. And then that group morphed into the accountability group. And it just took off from there. Don't be afraid to start your own, but you definitely need to start putting yourself out there and find a group of women who can really connect with you and help you with your aspirations because you never know what's going to happen. Case in point. Amber and I, we are here today and we've now partnered and bought a million dollar business that's doing great. We're excited to grow that. So now Amber, let's kind of tell the story. So we met in the accountability group. We basically have known each other for several years. And so now let's go into the story of how we actually decided to buy this business together. It starts off with me because I'm crazy ambitious sometimes. (laughs) And I just want to go for big things. And I, you know, had been researching and learning how to buy a business. And I knew that that was one of my next big goals that I wanted to achieve. I actually flew to Tampa, Florida, where Amber lives. And I was evaluating the business and I called Amber up and I said, Hey, I'm going to be in town. Do you want to have breakfast with me and my daughter? I brought my daughter with me. So we went out to breakfast, had a great time, you know, connected, you know, connecting in person with Amber. Was that the first time we met in person? It was. I can't. No, I think no, it was. was. No, I think we we had met at a conference. I believe in Orlando. That was the first okay. time. And okay. Then we That's had right. Not, yeah. This was the second time. But the first this time one the on one. Time. Yes. Yes. That's true. The first time one on one. You're right. We had been to that conference together. That's right. So then you know I had breakfast with Amber and my daughter, and it's just awesome. Just an awesome experience to uh, to be there and, and reconnect and talk about our ambitions and things. And so then I started evaluating this business. It's a construction business and I put it under contract and I was intending to purchase it on my own. And as I got further along in the SBA loan process, it became very apparent that me living in Dallas was a big no-no for the SBA, right? Because the business was located in Tampa, Florida. And so they didn't like kind of an offsite owner. And so then I was like, "Uh uh-oh, now what do I do? I have three choices. I can either walk away, right? And try to find a business in Dallas. I can move to Tampa, but that's going to be disruptive for my family and, and cause a whole lot of other stress. Or I can find a partner who is in Tampa. And as I was looking at those three options, I was like, you know what? I'm going to call Amber. I'm just going to float it out there to Amber to see what she thinks. Because I still really believe in this business. I want to buy this business. I've come so far in this that I don't want to quit now. And so I called her. (laughs) I called Amber. And so Amber, you take over from here. When I called you, what do you remember about that phone conversation? the timing was so perfect. It was perfect. I had a direction that I thought that I was taking, but then a door shut because I had closed it. And then I was also following the businesses. I liked the boring businesses. I understood the concept and, you know, it was exciting for me and I had funds available. And so when she called me, I knew that whatever she wanted, I'm in because when you build up a relationship with someone and you know, you know, their character, you know, I mean, when I had the, we had, when we met for a breakfast, you were so thorough with everything. I just knew you were going to be successful. At that point, I wasn't even part of the conversation, but I knew all of the work and research that you had put into this business, that it was a great opportunity. And so when you asked me, would you like to do this? Of course, I was all in. Anything to do to support you, because I know this was a great decision and a great opportunity. And, you know, and I was so relieved that all it took was one phone call. And she was like, Yes, I absolutely want to be do this with you because I was like, 
Finally, because honestly, I was really down. I was really down and frustrated and upset because I have put so much effort into buying this business because I had been working on it for almost a year before I called Amber and just kept running into wall after wall after wall. And it's like, man, I just don't know if I can keep going. And honestly, calling Amber and having Amber say yes, and then she brings her new energy to the process really got me going again because I was pretty beat down. And so I was super grateful for that and and what Amber brought to that process. So now let's talk a little bit about, so we, we said yes. And then of course we had to negotiate, right? We had to negotiate splits. We had to figure out who's going to do what in the business. We had to figure out who's signing on the loan and turns out Amber had to sign on the loan because she's the boots on the ground partner. There was a lot of learning and, and I felt bad for you, Amber, because, because I had already been through, you know, 12 months of this absorbing everything and understanding. And then you kind of got thrown into the fire. And then there was so much pushing to get the deal closed that I kept having to push back on the broker and the lender to be like, no, give Amber time to absorb everything that's going on. So tell me what thoughts were through that process. Oh, it was wild. It was wild. I mean, when you come into a space, the thing was, I knew your personality. And when that phone call did happen, just to go back, I could sense with your voice that this was it. But I could also sense that this wasn't the normal Camilla. This wasn't you. You, (laughs) Your energy was at a certain spot. And I could just tell you just needed more. You needed a partner that could come in and like, let's get this thing going. And so when it started going, yeah, it was very intensive. There was lots of emails. There's lots of paperwork. There's lots of submissions, but it's like, Hey, I'm doing this. We're doing this together. And so I'm going to put my full effort into all the requirements as necessary. And you were doing your part. I was doing my part. I had a, a few moments of like complete total chaos and I lost it occasionally. We had some issues, but the thing is, because I knew you and I knew your personality, I knew where your strengths were and I knew where what my strengths were. And so when there was a time you graciously called me and said, you know what, Amber, I think I'm going to take on the communication from this point onwards. I was totally fine with that. There was no offense. There was no attitude. There's like, yeah, Camilla can just zen me down and like I'm fiery. And so we just balanced. I got riled up and stuff got done. And then I could take a step back because no, you know how to communicate with me and you know my personality and you know how to say the right things to be like, okay, Amber, I got this. All right, cool. But then there's times where I'm like, okay, Camilla, I got this. So it's just this natural kind of, I don't know how we could have managed this. I feel like it's quite like we are perfectly matched. I agree. So my personality is a more mellow, more, you know, let things come and in Amber, you're more fiery. And I actually think that's a really great combination because sometimes I need your fire to get my butt going. And sometimes you need my mellowness to calm you down. Right? And so it works out pretty well so far. And I'm really happy with how our partnership is going. Yeah, it was wild. You're right. It was definitely wild through that process. And actually, I was really grateful to have someone who was going through it with me because but prior to that, you know, I was going through it and it was wild before too, but I was doing it all alone. One of my flaws is DIY. I want to DIY everything and, you know, rely on myself and I can do it myself, but I'm really learning and leaning in to partnership and what that can bring to not only your business, but your like mental well being. Because I could call you and we could commiserate together, right? <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. Like, I feel like I have to cut off my left arm to give to the bank. Like, this is just crazy. (laughs) But it was nice that we could commiserate together and, and go through that together. But then on the flip side, right? It was nice that we could be excited together, excited about what we're doing. And so after we closed the business, I hired a business consultant to come in and do a two-day intensive with us where we would spend two days together really mapping out the direction of the business. And this is one of my favorite things to do. So Amber, why don't you tell uh, your perspective of that process? What happened there? I highly recommend every business owner get a consultation and go through the process of really deconstructing 
your business and rebuilding it into the vision that you have for it. And that's exactly what we did. We broke down everything and it was an overload, but then it was exciting too, because we could see every different element and every component that we could improve and we can add processes and we can add people and we can add resources. And then we created this picture of like, Hey, this is what our business stands for. This is the image that we have. This is the client experience that we want. And this is how we want our reputation to uphold as owners. So it was really, really interesting. I mean, it was exhausting, but I highly, highly, highly suggest doing it because we were so fortunate that you found our consultant. Nina did a spectacular job at just simplifying things and breaking it down and then also introducing ideas that we probably had no awareness of because she had had such extensive experience in the industry that she opened our eyes to what we need to think about and what we need to plan for. And, and it was very like, you're right. It was mentally taxing. Absolutely. Right. At the end of each day, I was exhausted, but also very exciting. And it was, okay, where are we going with the business? So for context, we bought a residential home remodeling business that was small, right? It was run by one GC and maybe three employees and then a bunch of subs. It was a female GC. Her name's Lynn. She's amazing. And what she built was was just amazing. But she was at capacity. So we purchased it at the point where she was running the business, running it well, but she's at capacity and didn't really have the ability to scale and grow, nor the desire because she's ready to retire. And so, you know, Amber and I bring the business in and often what works in a small capacity is not going to work in a big capacity. Think about the term think big, right? If you got to think big, as you're thinking big, you have to have different processes in place and different goals in place if you really want to scale a business. And so that's what we were working on is like, okay, how do we take the pieces of the business that have been built that are fantastic and how do we add on them or which one of them do we need to completely change in order to be able to scale and grow? And I think one of the things we really focused on was identifying our ideal client. And with the ideal client in mind, we're trying to work through what's the experience like. So what did we land on for our ideal client? We landed on me, basically. <laughs> <laughs> me. Amber. Amber is our ideal client. Maybe a little older. But really, it's it's uh, homeowners that own their property, of course, homeowners, homeowners, but the property is older than like 20 years old and there's equity in the home and a certain income level. That's the one main client. And then we have another component, which are A class, B class real estate investors that are looking to renovate, remodel their investment property. So mm-hmm. being from my experience, I've been doing project management on our own remodels for the past three years. And since moving to Tampa, my experience with general contractors wasn't very pleasant. So then I was the ideal client. I put myself in my own shoes. I'm like, man, it would have been so much better if these certain things happened instead of it not happening. So how could I capture that and then move it into this new business idea and then the experience for the client? Yeah. And so when you're evaluating your ideal client, you know, the exercise you need to go through is you have to, of course, identify as many little tidbits of information as you can. Is this person married? Does this person own their own home? What's their income level? What's their net worth? The, where do they work? Where do they shop? Do they have children? Right. And you kind of get into this nitty gritty about your ideal client. And then once you've identified some of those characteristics, you move on to what we call pain points. And Amber identified one there where the biggest pain point, I think, and this probably might be for everybody who works with a general contractor is they don't have a good experience. And why do they not have a good experience? Because communication breaks down. Amber, why don't you tell them the tagline that you came up with? I love this tagline. The tagline is because every homeowner deserves a premium experience from their general contractor. That's mm-hmm. the key. I yeah. underline it, highlight it, bold it right there. That makes us stand out because that's really what it's all about. We're bringing people, yep. people like as me as a client, I'm bringing a contractor into my home with their crew to beautify my home. 
And people that come into my home are invited. They're guests, they're family, right? This is an important space. So Mm -hmm. this experience needs to be positive. It needs to be a good experience. It needs to be something they want to be, that we want memorable in a positive way, because this is part of a family's memory. I have a really good book right here. It's called The Pumpkin Plan. It it says a simple strategy to grow a remarkable business in any field. But the key components here are to focus on the one, right? Focus on the one person in your business that you can grow and work with, right? So the one ideal client, once you focus on that one ideal client, turns out there are millions of them and they will come to you and they will flock to you and you'll be able to build this amazing business. So that's kind of the focus for the business. And so as we scale and grow, we were looking at things like minimum jobs and what specific area of Tampa did we want to focus on? What are we going to do for communication? And we kind of designed out these processes so that there would be very high touch and it's going to be very easy for us to stand out from the crowd. And that's what you're doing here. That book, The Pumpkin Plan is like, well, how do you grow the giant pumpkin, right? You grow the giant pumpkin by not focusing on the little pumpkins, getting rid of the little pumpkins and focusing on that giant pumpkin. And so that's really kind of what we are building. And we're so excited. We are so excited. We have mapped out the plans. We have vision. Um, we're, we're working on like our vision and mission statement. And, you know, that's where the, because every homeowner deserves a premium experience from their general contractor came from. And we're just super excited to build that premium experience for our clients and help them have a beautiful space because your home means so much to you. And if it's your own home that you're you're living in, you want it to make you happy. Every time you step into that new kitchen, you just want to like, ah, oh, I love it here. And that's our goal. That's our goal for sure. The next step is when friends and family ask you, oh, who did this? Would you recommend them? We want a resounding yes. Because the experience was so good, we want others to experience that too, right? So that's the focus. The focus is to make it a great experience and that our clients will want to say yes. They will want and look forward to recommending us to their other associates and friends, family. Yep. 100%. 100%. So we're nearing the end of our time. And I just wanted to wrap up with any last bits of advice to our listener. If they are interested in either accountability or partnership or growing a business, what last bits of advice do you have? Step out of your comfort zone. Amazing things happen when you put yourself into some, into an uncomfortable situation. It could be making a call. It could be showing up at a meetup. It could be asking for an invitation to join an accountability group. Do it to show up and give it a try and see what doors of opportunity are going to open the relationships that you can meet the people that you can inter- interact with and the things that you can learn. It's all about growth and the growth happens when you're outside of your comfort zone. hundred percent. And, and you're right. You never know what door is going to open, but it for sure will not open if you're not in the room. And so you've got to get yourself in those rooms so that you can have access to those doors and you'll be surprised. I look back and I'm like, wow, you know, we met like two and a half years ago and now here we are today doing this thing together. It's amazing. It's a pretty cool experience. It's a hard experience, hundred percent hard, but also amazing and exciting. And so Amber, I just thank you for being my partner in this and (laughs) helping me make this possible because I'm super excited about where we're headed and, and what we get to do. And even I have bigger plans, right? Not just for homeowners, but for women in construction fields, because we absolutely want to support women in these fields and we got big plans. So stay tuned. Big big plans. (laughs) You'll be hearing from us. Thank you All so right. Much. Thanks so much for joining and please share this episode with someone that you know and love. After all, we need to share the education to share the wealth. Thanks so much. Bye for now.